um, Steve Sommerfeld opened today's talk um, talking about how the U.S. leads the world in animal protein production, but it's way behind the rest of the world in aquaculture. There's a huge chance to catch up with homegrown technology. The world's leading research is being done right here um, in, at the Freshwater Institute, and we can, we can spin that technology out and really create um, something great for, for North America. So land-based closed containment systems allow us to increase farm fish production. That's the bottom line. How are we going to increase farm fish production in a manner that protects the land and water resources? So we can produce fish with these pioneering technologies that are in a system that uses very little water. So just a, just a small garden hose full of water, as an analogy. Um, and produce a lot of fish while we're removing practically all of the pollution from the water that would be leaving the system and meeting stringent point source discharge limits. So it allows us to operate in an environment that's highly regulated. We know that we have a significant market demand for safe, high quality seafood um, that's raised in a sustainable way and that tastes good. And we've been able to determine from a lot of work that the Freshwater Institute's done with their grow out trials and uh, some test marketing that um, you know, the fish produced in these systems has those attributes. Marine systems are giving up under the load. Net pens just accelerate the, uh, increase the pressure on the marine systems, in our case in BC. Tremendous damage being done to the wild salmon populations upon which everything else depends. So it's a, it's a, it's a major problem and it has to be fixed quickly. Uh, the technology is obviously already there. The Freshwater Institute has done a tremendous job of, uh, of sharing their information and their research. And it's applied research, so it's useful. It's very useful research. And then they've basically uh, got all of the uh, more pure research, if you like, the uh, more fundamental research uh, feeding into the, into the system. And then coordinated with that, that information is disseminated to the projects so that uh, it can happen a lot uh, quicker. We have a chance here in North America to establish um, a number of mini Silicon Valleys that are centers of sustainable aquaculture, land-based, environmentally beneficial, producing great fish, and doing it at a really good return on investment for investors, because that's where I come from. I'm just, uh, I'm just a business guy and business background. And we started with that vision. And um, our first one of these conferences was uh, 35 people arguing in a room about whether it was technically feasible. And we brought that group out here and we showed them the research facility that you guys have helped fund, um, uh, the Conservation Fund has helped with. And we turned disbelievers into believers because they saw it in reality, in action, high density fish being produced, happy fish, eight eat the fish, it's great fish, and um, started to see that there's some potential here. And now, you know, two and a half years later, we've got, um, we've gone from that 35 people to oversubscribed at 135, um, and not just from the U.S. and Canada anymore. We've got people from 12 different countries that have come here. And uh, w what we're trying to do, and um, really what I think we're succeeding in doing with the help of groups like yours and venues like this one, which is phenomenal, um, is to uh, build an industry. Um, certainly the work that the Freshwater Institute has done with grow out trials for Atlantic salmon, they're now into their fifth trial. That work has been fundamental to uh, the project that I've been working on with the Namgis First Nation mm -hmm. in terms of being able to support that these fish will perform in, in, in this kind of system. And they've been great in terms of making their fish available for uh, the market feasibility testing and the market education that, that we've been talking about. Uh, we also work with the Freshwater Institute um, to provide technical advisory services to projects in BC. And it really allows producers that are looking at um, setting up a farm to be able to access a group of experts in engineering and design and, and uh, bioplanning and be able to have that as, as a sounding board as they move forward with whatever um, systems engineering and design company that they're working with. So it, it really helps the producer do some of the due diligence that was being talked about in the panel this oh, yeah. morning. 
we're interested in aquaculture generally. Uh, one, because of the um, what we consider to be significant environmental problems associated with the open net pen industry and and the issues with sustainability. And uh, on the closed containment side, we see that as an alternative. Um, many people believe that our organization is completely against aquaculture, and that's simply not the case. Uh, but we believe that there are better ways to raise fish. What closed containment does is it, it provides an opportunity where you can raise fish, not only in coastal communities, but you can take them and plant them right smack in the center of you know mountain high Colorado, Denver, Colorado, where a grocery store owner with an empty vacant lot can have a RAS system raising seafood that he can just simply go out into his parking lot, harvest the fish every day, and bring it in fresh and lay it on ice. I mean, this is a technology that's out there, and it can be done, and it can be expanded. You know, for the first time, this industry has seen a technology that is scalable, uh, that the Freshwater Institute with Steve and Brian have built, that is not only scalable, but gets a return on investment. So when you talk about that seafood trade deficit, we all know here that it's over an $11 million trade deficit. And we now have the technology portion of this tool that is not only sustainable, like Chris says, but it also gets a return on investments. This is, uh, I think, front and center, one of the key research facilities. Uh, I think a lot of people are looking at this to say, can it be done? Mm -hmm. And I think they're showing that it can be done. Now more and more, and I don't think it's just grocery chains, I think it's the consumer in general, it's chefs, people want to buy local, um, people want to know that, uh, that uh, where their product comes from, um, so and, and in addition to retail chains, retailers are not just looking f at sustainable seafood, but they're looking at what their whole impact is on the community involved, so that they're looking on their carbon footprint, and they're looking at uh, what their recycling policy is, and their environmental policy. So they, they take all of that into consideration. I think it's a, it, it's a, it has great potential.